All right, now in this segment, we're going to talk about how to create different kinds of wine and talk about some of the varieties of wine. Not varieties, it could be the different, the different styles of winemaking. All right, the first style, style is still wines. These are also known as table wines. Still or table wines. These are, these are just wine, okay? It's, it's fermented grape juice and uh, it's, it's bottled, it's wine. Okay, it may be aged, maybe not aged, et cetera, et cetera, but it's wine. All right, second kind of wine is sparkling wine. And oftentimes, people talk about sparkling wine as champagne. Champagne is only one kind of sparkling wine. And where is champagne made? Champagne, champagne France, champagne. Okay, what are you not drinking enough of in your lives? Champagne. champagne. We must drink more champagne. I'd like you, all, all of you who are 21 or over this weekend, I'd like you to um, have a homework assignment, drink at least one glass of champagne, okay? Uh, you'll feel much better come next Tuesday. So champagne is made by trapping the natural byproduct of fermentation in the bottle. And the, the method of making champagne is called the method champagne It's the, met, the champagne method. Champagne method. And we use the champagne method for sparkling wines as well, but we can't call them champagnes unless they are from Champagne, France. Now, here's what happens. Champagnes are made, true champagnes are made from Champagne, France. The two major grapes that are grown in Champagne, France are the Pinot Noir and the Pinot Chardonnay. Now you've all, you've, I'm sure all of you have heard of Chardonnay, all right? It's actually, the full name is Pinot Chardonnay, Pinot meaning grape. And uh, Pinot Noir, it's a very popular wine as well. It's a very difficult grape to grow, by the way. Kind of a nasty grape. Doesn't, doesn't like to grow, just doesn't like to shoot up in abundance. And um, the Pinot Noir is, is a black grape, which is what Pinot Noir means. You know, it means black grape. It's very dark. Um, so sometimes you'll hear of a champagne, uh, which is um, a white champagne made from Pinot Noir, and that's called Blanc de Noir white from black. Okay. Sometimes you'll see a, 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 um, a, a, a champagne called Blanc de Blanc, which is white champagne from white wine, white grapes. Okay. Sometimes you'll see pink champagne, which is actually a rosé made from the Pinot Noir grapes. Okay. In other words, uh, 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 and, and you don't very rarely see an actual red champagne. Uh, where, the, where the Pinot Noir grape skins are allowed to stay on the grapes too long. Now here's what happens. Here's, here's what happened. Uh, champagne is made in a northern area of France, which is kind of cold. And, and what happens is, is that when you make wine, when you ferment wine, the, the yeast keep making CO2 and alcohol until one of two things happen. Until they either run out of grape sugars, okay, or until the alcohol level gets too high that it kills them. It's kind of a mini version of global warming. So in, in champagnes, what was happening was they were making this wine in champagne, and they were putting it in bottles, and they were putting it in caves, to age, but what happened was because it was so cold up there, the yeast actually went to sleep before they were finished doing their fermenting. And in the spring, when they woke back up again, they started fermenting again because there was still grape, there was still uh, sugar left in the bottle, and they were blowing these bottles apart part and knocking the tops off and that kind of stuff. <laughs> now in those days, wine bottles used to have like rags 
self, uh, soaked in paraffin, like a wax, would be the, the sealants for the bottle. And you can imagine the, you know, the pressure of champagne. It's, it's a tremendous amount of pressure in there as the CO2 is trapped. That was just blowing, the, the, blowing these things right out of there. It wasn't until a, a blind monk began to use corks and a net that people were actually able to make champagnes. Now, what, does anybody know what the name of this monk was? This blind monk? And you can imagine why a blind monk invented this, because you, you know, you're walking through the thing you can't see, and champagne tops are flying off at you, you know? Uh, you know, and maybe he wasn't blind before he started doing that, I don't know. His name was Dom, which is, which was what they call, what used to call monks, you know, Dom like a father or brother type thing. Perignon, Dom Perignon was a blind monk who, had, who first used corks and a net to keep the champagne bottle from blowing the top off. And what happens is, champagnes go through a regular form of fermentation, they're put into the bottle, and uh, then a little more sugar is added, and a little more yeast, and a little more wine, or a little more, excuse me, a little more grape juice, a little more musk, and that's called a dosage. D-O-S-A-G-E. And it's more yeast, more sugar, and a little more liquid added in there, and they actually undergo a second fermentation. They actually undergo a second fermentation in the bottle, and that's where that CO2 is trapped. I want to tell you one other thing about a champagne bottle. A champagne bottle, you'll notice, well, that's not a very good drawing of a champagne bottle, but it has a, a, an indentation in the bottom of the bottle there. That's called the kick, K-I-C-K. -K. And the reason we have the kick is because um, it, uh, it, 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 um, it helps to disperse the, um, <coughs> do it from the upside down here. It helps to disperse the pressure so that it's not pushing straight down on the bottom of the bottle. It helps to push it out towards the sides there, and that way um, uh, the, the bottles don't burst out the bottle. Now, opening a champagne bottle uh, or a sparkling wine bottle, remember there's tremendous pressure in there. So what you want to do is you, you take the foil off the top, okay? You loosen the net. There's a, there's a metal net over top of it that's got a little twisty on it. You untwist that, but you keep your thumb on top of that cork at all times. You point it away from people, okay? I was at a thing a couple years ago. I did a talk. They're opening champagne bottles afterwards. I actually got hit right above the eye. I mean, I was really lucky. I didn't lose an eye. That. Well, they say it's all fun and games until someone loses an eye. But it shot from across the room. I, I mean, it really stunned me. I was really, I was pretty upset, too. These idiots were opening this champagne bottle. But you, you keep your, your finger. Now, without taking the net off, because you take the net off, you, you, the cork will go shooting out. You hold the bottle on a 45 degree angle. You don't twist the cork, you twist the bottle a couple times, back and forth, or in one direction, whichever you like to do. Why do we twist the bottle and not the cork? You can break the cork. You, you can break the cork, plus you get a lot more torque on the bottle, easier to twist it. Torque is T-O-R-Q-U-E. And then slowly this cork comes out and what you'll hear a popping sound. And then what you want to do is you want to hold the cork on that angle and you'll see a little trail of vapor come out of there. That's the excess CO2. And then you set it upright and begin to pour. The, the reason, if you, if you open it while it's standing straight up, it'll foam up and spout over. And that's not a good way to open good champagne. Any questions about sparkling wines or still wines? 